Ahoy hoy, this is Michaela from Team Retro, where we like retro games and we like the devices that bring them to us. So this video is part three of my four-part feature series on the Steam Deck for the month of February. And in this video, we're going to be going over plugins. This is a recent addition to the Steam Deck due to the Decky Loader. Plugins have always been available, but they haven't been this easy to manage since the Steam Deck has been released. And so I've gone to not having any plugins at all, to having about eight or so that I use consistently. So in this video, I'm going to show you the eight plugins that I have installed onto my Steam Deck why I like them and how they enhance the functionality of this already amazing device. And it is my hope that once you see this video, you will try some of these plugins for yourself and you may even get the courage to go into the Decky Loader and pick out some other plugins that might benefit your own individual use case. This will be a bit of a shorter video than normal, but hopefully this will be very informative to you Steam Deck owners out there. So let's dive in and let's get to work. Now installing Decky Loader is very easy. All you have to do is simply navigate to the deckbrew.xyz website and you'll get a whole bunch of information as to what Decky Loader can do for you as well as a quick tutorial on how it works. There's a storefront where you can download most of these plugins from and it's going to embed itself right in the quick menu of the steam os so really all you have to do is download the installer and then go ahead and move it to your desktop and then from there you can double click the file and it'll direct you to an auto installation and you'll be good to go so the first plugin we're going to look at is meta deck and what this does is it takes all of those non-Steam games that never records playtime and it actually does set a playtime to them. What it will also do is it will also create some game info. So to show you that, let's go into New Super Mario Brothers, which is a DS game that I set up using Steam ROM Manager. And if we go to the game info page, this would normally be blank but instead we have a nice little game synopsis. Now this isn't perfect, for example, if we go into the Dolphin emulator here, we're not going to get a description of the GameCube emulator, we're going to get this weird Activision game that says, listen and endanger dolphin is calling you. And it's actually worse if we go into something like Duck Station because if we go to the game info, it's not even in English. And unfortunately there's no way to change that, but for every other game that's not a Steam game, it seems to work just fine. Now let's look at another simple plugin called MU Deck Hotkeys. And what this does is simply tell you the MU Deck setup for accessing hotkeys and functions in your emulators. And any emulator that you have installed with MU Deck will be represented by this plugin. So this includes RetroArch as well as standalone emulators like Dolphin. So if you're anything like me and you have a tendency to get lost navigating your different standalone emulators and trying to figure out how to exit them or enter them or do save states, this plugin is going to be the one for you. I would definitely recommend that you check it out. The next plugin we're going to take a look at is controller tool. So let's go ahead and plug in a PS5 controller to the Steam Deck. Now I haven't used this PS5 controller in a while, so the battery is a little on the low side. But you'll notice the second that we pair it, there actually is a notification here saying that it is low on battery. And so that's the magic of what controller 
DevTools does, it notifies you when your controllers are running low on battery and sends you notifications appropriately. Now, unfortunately, this doesn't work on every single controller, but it will work on PlayStation 5 as well as Xbox controllers. Just not the Elite controller for some reason, but definitely basic Xbox controllers will work. All right, let's go to the next plugin, which is Deck Settings. And this is one of my personal favorites out of all of the ones that I use. Now this is specifically for games in your Steam library. You can actually look up Share Deck reports right here in the Quick Settings menu, and you can pick out the most optimal setting for your battery life. So here is the best setting for Monster Hunter Rise, and this person Strugs suggests that you will get almost 5 hours of battery life from 100 to 0, by configuring your Monster Hunter Rise setup in this way. So now let's go ahead and go into the game and let's drop the TDP down to eight and let's have our settings at low and follow those instructions as best we can. Now I made a couple of other adjustments. I dropped the refresh rate to 40 frames per second, but everything else I tried to set up the same way as the suggestions from the plugin. And the game does seem to be running pretty decent. I'm not sure if the graphics quality is the best we can get on this device. But if we go ahead now and we check the expected battery life, we're at 65% and we're projected to get about 2 hours and 6 minutes out of the settings. So it doesn't quite equal what the plugin says that we are going to get, but it does show an improvement in battery life versus what the default settings were. And we can tweak from there, but at least the plugin will give me a decent starting point. Now, Vibrant Deck is my second favorite of these plugins because it gives me that OLED look on a non OLED screen. And I am a big fan of OLED screens for how vibrant they are. So, what this plugin does is it actually allows me to manually enhance the color saturation. So, this will now look like an OLED screen and it will be brighter and more vibrant, hence the name. And games look really good when you enhance the settings this way. And we'll take a look at how good Vibrant Deck is while checking out this other plugin called Power Tools. Now you can really use this to tweak your game settings a lot deeper than the built-in Steam configuration but I mostly use it to disable SMT so that I can get better performance on higher end emulation like with Switch games. So let's take a look here at Zelda Link's Awakening and with the combination of Vibrant Deck making this look amazing as well as Power Tools disabling the SMT to get that 60 FPS frame rate. We're also running a couple of mods here that I got from a channel called Optimized Gamer that showed that you can make this game run better than on the actual Nintendo Switch. And I'll leave a link to that video in the description below, but this would not be possible without the aid of these two plugins. The next plugin that I like to use is called Steam Grid DB. And this will add a change artwork section to your non-Steam game, specifically your ROM files. And so let's use an example here from Joust for the NES. So it's going to go on the Steam Grid database and it's going to pull up all of the available artworks there. You can go ahead and pick which ones you want. And then you could go through the capsules, the heroes, the logos, and the icons, and you could just select the ones that you actually like best. So this will be great for your non-Steam games and applications so that you can make them look part of the SteamOS operating system. And if you combine this with MetaDeck, then it's really going to look like these games belong on the Steam Deck. 
And the final plugin we're going to look at in this video is Proton DB Badges. And what this does is it actually pulls information from the Proton database to let you know which Steam games actually look good on the Steam Deck. And the badge will either be silver, gold, or platinum depending on how well the game has been known to play on the Steam Deck. And if you actually click on the badge, it will direct you to the Proton database and you can get comments and reports on how well these games perform and what issues there might be. And so there you have it. Those are the plugins that I use to get the most out of my Steam Deck. And that's really just the tip of the iceberg. Thanks to Decky Loader, you have a whole storefront where you can easily browse and install the different plugins that will help you get the most out of your Steam Deck and really customize it and make it yours. And things were not like this a year ago. There were plugins, but they were buggy. They didn't quite work the way you would expect. And until recently, I straight up just avoided them, but now here I am with eight plugins that are absolutely amazing and there's much more out there. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Are there plugins that you prefer or are there ones that you enjoy over the ones that I've seen here? Or did this video give you the courage to jump in and test out Decky Loader for yourself? And if you want to continue the conversation further, feel free to reach out on the Steam Machine Discord. Link will be in the video description, and that's usually where you can find me hanging out in between videos. But that'll do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. And if this video was helpful to you in any way, please be sure to like and subscribe. Until next time, bye for now, and don't stop believing.